Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm your boy Nev from Nev's Tech Bits, also known as your friendly neighborhood basement dweller. Don't worry, ma'am. I am from the internet. Two types of people in this world. There are two types of people in this world. Type one will not touch a used piece of equipment. They just won't go near it. They want new. They want the best. And then you get type two, the type that my brother and I fall into. We don't mind going through the dump, the sanitary landfill in order to get free goodness. Okay, so back in the day, every November, it was a thing for Thanksgiving, all the family to come down to my little village and we would hike over to the dump and we would go through the dump to get free stuff. I'm not the only one that did this. I mean, there was a rich banker whose son loved to go to the dump and find what they could. One day he told me he found a whole bunch of Atari games. On my family's hunt, we managed to find a Nintendo system. It worked as well as any other Nintendo system that we came across. Now the hardware I want to show you here did not actually come from a dump, but from a free pile on the side of the road. An old IBM ThinkPad Pentium 2 with a little LCD. Jeez, what would you even call that? A little LED taskbar? That's just so freaking cool. Remember when ThinkPad meant IBM? It's always great to have an old computer because you can't play games quite the same way on a newer system. I mean you can, but it's not as much fun. It's not as sexy. It's not as authentic. I found two of these suckers. I could lift these things like weights next time we have a pandemic and I'm locked up at home. But more importantly, something that my dad managed to find on the side of the road in free piles are these and Sony Walkmans. A lot of people don't seem to know this, but Sony Walkman is a big name that's actually worth some money. Check this thing out. Sony Discman. It's a Sony, my guys. The D25 Sony Discman, a beautiful system that had its own internal battery, and it looks like it hooked directly up with the units. You would basically have a unit where, you know, you just set it down just like that, and it would get into your system. Your sound system, I mean. Brian Master Productions, Toronto, Ontario. I love it when these things have a little bit of a story to them. Where did it come from? What was it used for? Why did it end up on the free pile? Did this one actually come from the free pile, or did it come from the e-waste? My dad knows a guy who does e-waste. <laughs> this thing's worth about a hundred bucks in the condition it's in, which freaking blows my mind. The whole stop at the free bin is now officially worth it because I have a piece of technology that doesn't work, but is still collectible and worth a hundred bucks. This thing's worth about 30, 40, but man, you gotta get to be worth about 50 before I'll put my time listing this stuff. Just so romantic to go back in time when technology was so physical and tactile and you needed to physically own it physically use it, worry about how you're going to handle it from the unit to the bin. A time when the people and the recording industries wanted you to break what you had, so you had to go out and buy new ones. Anyways, folks, fun dumpster diving, fun finding free stuff, and awesome when you find out that something that's broken is actually worth money and actually have financial value. That's it for me, folks. Net from Nav's Tech Bits. If you like this stuff, hit that like button. I always appreciate it. Otherwise, folks, catch you later. Have a good one.